doing? I am speed! Slow, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Are those two cups of the same <laughs> What if you got two copies and you like put them next to each other and you pre flip the page in one? So you didn't have to waste time flipping a page. Oh my god! That's another tip! <laughs> Don't waste your time flipping a page by two bucks. Yeah! <laughs> Over time and through countless social interactions with friends, family, and strangers, I quickly came to realize that I have very little spontaneous social skills. A co-worker last week described me as quiet. You barely know I'm there. We have had lunch in the same room, and she will later ask if I had taken my lunch yet. I was standing right next to you. But to my family, I may as well be a pet peacock with... <laughs> what with the flamboyant nature and squawking presence. On the internet, I think, is where I can be a version of myself that I actually like. <laughs> How did I get here? Uh, oh yes! Okay, so in many social interactions, in order to comfort myself in such an uncomfortable situation, I normally end up steering the conversation towards books. Books I've read, I'm currently reading, books that may or may not have anything to do with the context of the present conversation. <laughs> and to this, people normally have one fundamental reaction. How do you read so many books so quickly? And to that, I normally respond with, can I go home yet? I have books to read. I have books to read. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the Neverland Book Club. Today I would like to discuss a topic I get asked about a lot and I actually think I've curated a substantial list of ways in which one may begin to read more books in a shorter period of time or even become a speed reader. Now I would like to preface by saying I actually don't think I read that many books in a short time frame. At least not nearly as much as the people I see online reading 50 books a month. I do have a full time job. Other hobbies. Sort of. Family. One friend, who is also my husband, as well as other side projects, and you know, life. Kind of. Eh, but uh, I do find time in the day, every day, to read. Some days it's two pages, some days it's 200 or more. But the important thing is that no matter what kind of day I'm having, I crave the escape so much. I find the time. I'd like to say I believe reading is a skill that can be improved with practice. Becoming a better reader and retaining more information can perhaps be a whole other video on its own. But I think once you've mastered one, the other follows. Today we're going to focus on speed. Getting more words to your brain in a shorter period of time. And so without further ado, here are my top tips to reading more books faster or becoming a speed reader. I couldn't decide on what the title was going to be. So jumbled all the words. <laughs> there you go. Okay, first you need to part with the idea that you can only read physical books. Oh, I just came up with another one. Or that, <laughs> or that you can only read one book at a time. How does, how does that improve your speed? That, that probably improves your comprehension more than your speed, so I'll save that for the next really? one. Really? I feel like that would also lower your comprehension. You're no. Come up again. Really? Oh. Am I growing? <laughs> You're giving me motion sickness. Okay, first you need to part with the idea that you can only read physical books. I have made this point in conversation multiple times. I've heard people say, oh, I just love the feeling of a physical book in my hand. I can't deal with anything else. And meh, 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 meh. Did I used to be you? Not the point. The point is, that's bullshit. Yes, a physical book in the hand is always the best option. But if the story is more important to you than the physical pages in which they are written on, Trust me, you won't care if you're turning a page or scrolling on a screen. Dump that idea. Listening to audiobooks or reading on a Kindle or iPad is still reading. Hell, even reading on your phone is still reading. You know how many books I've read on my tiny iPhone screen just because that's all I have available at work? I mean, at the moment, while I'm at work. <laughs> I'm basically failing at hiding my addiction from coworkers. Problem, solution. As long as you're consuming story in an honest fashion, it doesn't matter how it's delivered to your brain. Why else would they be available in those formats? You think literary companies care about money? Next, read shorter books first. The satisfaction of finishing a book is all the motivation you need to pick up the next one and chase that high one more time. Drugs. Don't set yourself up for failure by picking up a 1,000 page fantasy novel to get through in one day. I'm looking at you, Priory of the Orange Tree. You don't have to be that long. 
It's a very long book. Start off slow, start off short. Pick books that are under 250 or so pages and challenge yourself to complete it by a certain date or time. That could be one day, one week, one month. I'd say start with one week. A whole month is too lenient, you'll never read fast that way, and one day is too optimistic to start off with. Try one week, then shorten it to five days, three, two down to one. Trust me, you'll get there. However, this is tricky since you don't want reading to end up feeling like another chore. It should be fun. Don't lose that aspect. Let it be more of a reward rather than a checkbox on your to-do list. Next, multitasking. Read while doing other things. This is where audiobooks are the most helpful. Driving can eat up a large portion of your day, as well as cleaning, showering, etc. An audiobook is your number one companion when it comes to boring tasks. If you use other modes of transportation, such as a bus, a train, a magic flying carpet, audiobooks are still my favorite medium of reading on the go, especially for those who are prone to motion sickness. It can sometimes be hard to keep your eyes focused on a slightly moving page. All of my best Uber rides have been with silent drivers and me just looking out the window listening to a good audiobook. Five stars. Right. If you are driving though and using both GPS and audiobook at the same time, the two voices can sometimes compete for attention, so be sure to put that GPS voice on mute and then miss your exit, then making you half an hour late for wherever you're going just to get there and shrug traffic when really you were listening to a large bat-winged man make tortillas with an illiterate used-to-be human woman you subconsciously put your own face on. What? Read while working out! <laughs> Read during sex. <laughs> She's throwing an audiobook. <laughs> Read while working out. This can be in audiobook or regular book format. Form format. I personally like to. I pay, pay. I personally like to read on my phone or Kindle while working out. And when I say working out, I don't mean high intensity interval training or weight training. That of course needs your full attention. And cocaine. But if you're just doing 30 minutes of cardio on a stationary bike, elliptical, stairmaster, treadmill, 500 year old bad boy, you name it. If your hands are relatively free, you can read. If they're not, you can listen. Good girl. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the way in which we listen to our audiobooks. If you're listening at 1x speed, you're psychotic. I could never. It is far too slow. For me. I don't know if I'm perhaps the psychotic one myself, but I can't stand to listen to anything, be it audiobook or podcast or what have you, if it is anything less than 1.75x speed. Preferably 2x speed. Speed. I feel like this has also made me a faster reader as well. Grasping the story in half the time can also be rewarding when it comes to finishing an audiobook faster than you initially anticipated. I personally feel as though hearing the book read aloud is not much different than reading the words themselves as a narrative voice in your head, so I find that after listening to an audiobook at 2x speed and then reading a physical book, I find myself reading at that same speed. If that makes sense. This could just be me, but try it and let me know what you think. I've also experimented with reading along to an audiobook with a physical book, and 2x speed just seems the most comfortable to me. Let me know in the comments below if, if you've tried this. I feel like it's helped. All right, now that we're no longer afraid of turning to our phones, iPads, Kindles, or audiobooks to consume more story, let's dive into speed reading as an art to be practiced. Personally, I feel as though practice makes better in this scenario. You'll never read perfectly. Some people will take certain things away from a story that have never crossed your mind, and that's okay. Vice versa could be said for your own takeaways. Again, comprehension is a topic for another video, but reading as much as you can in a shorter time frame as a form of practice will most likely get you there faster. Set reading sprint timers. Challenge yourself. As previously mentioned, when setting a time frame to get a certain amount of pages read by that time, do the opposite. See how many pages you can read in 10 minutes, 20, half an hour. But still try your best to not compromise comprehension for speed. Quality over quantity is still an essence at this point. Once you're all warmed up, it's time to play around with speed reading software such as Ace Reader or IQ. Linked below is an article with more softwares for this purpose along with their respective pros and cons. It's been proven, I actually don't have any proof, that you only really need the first and last letter of a word to determine what the word is. Our brains hate blanks, they just love to fill them in. And our brains fill in blanks pretty automatically, which is why when you double take while driving because you think you saw a horse on the freeway, you see a hell's angel on a sick Harley and Instead, that has happened to me. What? <laughs> I was on the freeway and I thought I saw a horse just galloping and then when I did a double take, it was like one of those hell's angels. One is just more interesting than the other and our brains like to have fun with our eyes. 
This type of software can be game-changing when reading a particularly dense book that you may find difficult to get through. I am not one to condone skimming an entire book, but a page or two to get through a few passages of information dump. Skim right ahead, milady. No one can stop you. All right, now here comes the advice I'm about to preach that I need to practice myself. Don't be afraid to DNF. Be terrified. DNFing a book can either feel absolutely liberating or incredibly dreadful. For me, it is usually dreadful. I have that FOMO sense that whatever I'm currently not getting out of a, a story will come in the later pages. I have false hope, false faith that the story will get better all the way up until the last page and I'm filled with rage and disappointment that I didn't spend all that time on a good book that I may have actually enjoyed. It's infuriating. I am trying to practice this more with myself. If you're reading a book and you put it down after your first stint and don't pick it back up within two days, it's highly unlikely you will enjoy that book all the way through. For me, I've been trying to give a story at least the first hundred pages before deciding if I'm going to continue reading or not. Basically, as I've said before, the first chapter is rarely where the story starts. On that note, I have one piece of advice that may be a hot take. <laughs> Read the last chapter first. Like an animal! <laughs> Did you do that? No. Okay, hear me out. If after you've read the first 100 pages and you're still on the fence about continuing a book or not, just go ahead and read the last chapter at that point. I have done this once. And honestly, it was so liberating to just know the ending and be done with the book because I was so overwhelmingly uninvested in the characters. I just wanted to know how the story itself ended. And you know what? That was all the closure I needed. I will probably practice this more often when I come across books like this. Some titles that come to mind when I think of this sort of practice includes Ghost Story by Peter Straub, Straub, or even Dune, because I didn't need to read all that. <laughs> I did not need to sit through either of those two unnecessary books. The last chapter in both of those titles held all the answers without all of the self-soothing fluff in the middle. And so I stand by my statement when it comes to some books. Not all of them. Don't be completely uncivilized. So, hold on. so it's not read the last chapter first. It's read the last chapter if you're ready to give up. Yes, if, you, if you've already read a little bit of it. Like, no, don't read it first, like an animal. But read a little bit first, and then if you're like, okay, I might DNF this, read the last chapter. If the last chapter is like, whoa, then you can maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, how, how do we get there? I can see that being a good last resort type thing. I used that once as a last resort, and I was like, this can be useful. I like, I wish I did this for those, yeah. specifically those two books. Yeah. All right. That wraps up my little list of advice on how to read faster or become a speed reader. Will I likely come up with more practice points over time and curate a new list? Probably. I'll keep you updated either way. If you have any advice that I didn't touch on or have put any of what we've discussed into practice, feel free to share in the comments down below. Also, feel free to check out our Etsy shop and grab a mug. Gr grab a mug while you're here on the internet. We may still be in the works of launching our own shop. If so, it will be linked below. If not, Etsy will be linked. They'll both be down there at some point, so take a look. It's a fun little hobby, designing, reading, bookish merch. I enjoy it. Also, be sure to check out our Patreon and see what we're up to over there. I have already published the prologue to the book Pardon me. I've already published the prologue to the book I'm writing, so if that's something you're interested in, that's where that lives. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you're not already. How long do you think it'll take to get to another 2,000 subs? I don't want to think about that right now. Today's shout out goes to Ryan Sweet. You're so sweet. That's... You probably hear that a lot. That's a terrible joke. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. I'm glad you played along with our little bookish game show-esque video. We will definitely be doing more of those in the future. I certainly had a lot of fun playing with myself. Playing. Myself. Comment below if you have any other bookie game show ideas. I'd love to hear them. Maybe even get a few of you... Would you... Excuse me. Maybe even get a few of you in on it as well. Make it a contestant thing. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll play it by ear, as they say. I'll have my people call your people. <laughs> okay, I'm done. All right, I'm off to go throw my car into autopilot and give new meaning to reading while driving. <laughs> Don't do that. Stay lost, keep reading. <laughs> Read faster. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> I did it. Oh.